Do you have a simple intake process that could use a little bit more automation? Well, if so, you are in the right place because in this video, we are breaking down that exact thing. We're gonna create from scratch a simple intake process with a form and build some automation after the intake is assigned. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I am the owner here at Gap Consulting and we make it our mission to help you automate the bullshit. Basically that means leveraging no code tools, especially automation. If you are just starting out with automation, I strongly recommend checking out my training. It's a free training you can grab at garethkronovos.com slash webinar dash registration. Even if you've been building automations for a while, it's always good to make sure you've got a strong foundation. You know, before you can learn how to run, you really need to learn how to walk and crawl. So make sure you have a strong foundation and that's what I'm gonna teach you in that training. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of this video and we're gonna build from scratch a simple inquiry form. Let's imagine that you wanted to put something on your website where you simply said, hey, if you'd like to schedule an appointment or if you wanna reach out to us and connect somehow, you're just gonna fill out a form. Once you fill out that form, maybe we're gonna assign you to somebody. So maybe there are different people on our team that take on different types of projects or handle different types of inquiries. Well, we're gonna build automations for that as well, depending on who you assign to this new inquiry. So let's hop on into it. First, we're just gonna start by adding a new base. I'm gonna start from scratch here. First thing I'll do is click up here in the title of the base and name it. I'll call this simple inquiry. And then I'm gonna rename this table, double click on the table here, and I'm just gonna call this inquiries. So what generally comes in with an inquiry? Well, at a minimum, we need to get some information about the person who is filling all this out. So first, I'm going to start by right clicking these new fields here and deleting them. I can't delete the primary field because this field must stay here, but I'll come back to this in a minute. So first, I'm going to think about the type of data that I'm accepting in that inquiry form. So this is going to be a little different for everybody. Maybe you're asking some more complex questions. Maybe you have some multiple selects or some drop downs. All of that's possible. Go ahead and put out whatever you have here. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. I'm going to start with a single line text and I'm going to ask for their full name. And go ahead and create that field. Next, I'm going to ask for an email address. This is pretty standard because we need a way to communicate and contact this individual. So I'll go ahead and find an email field type here. So I've got two fields so far, a name and email. The next thing I want to ask is some sort of vetting questions. Are they a good fit for our service? A lot of times people will skip this step in their inquiry form and they'll find out that they're chasing a lot of dead leads that aren't going to lead anywhere. So instead, I like to include a few different questions here that ensure that the person who's filling this out is in fact a good fit for the type of service that we're providing as a company. So let's put in some questions like what type of help are you looking for? And we can make this an open-ended question and use long text here. And this way they can fill out a quick blurb that is telling us a little bit about their problem and what they're looking for. You may have different types of qualifying questions that you include for your particular scenario. That's totally fine. Plug them in here. Now, as a last piece, I'm going to include a status because we actually want to track what the status of this particular inquiry is. For this, I will use a single select field type and I'll create a few new statuses. The first status might be uh, new application or new inquiry. The next status might be assigned. The next status might be in progress. I mean, use your imagination here. Maybe then I have completed. Again, this is all customizable depending on what you're trying to do and the exact process that you're trying to build here. So once we have a good set of different status, let's go ahead and create the field. Now, lastly, I wanna have a field here where I'm assigning this to a particular person. Let's suppose I wanna assign this to a team member internal to my organization. Well, I can use a user field type, but I'm gonna call this assigned to, that's the name of the field. And for the field type, I'll type in user and I'll make this selection here. Now, if we want to get fancy, we can notify users when they're added. That way, if they are working from a desktop or laptop, they're going to get a notification there inside of Airtable. Of course, it depends on their settings, what type of notifications they receive. They can turn those off if they find it to be obnoxious. They will also get push notifications to their phones if they have logged into the Airtable app on a mobile device. So let's go ahead and create that field. 
Now, right here, you're only going to see myself in this database because I'm creating it from scratch and I haven't shared it with anybody. Before you can add other people to this assigned to field, you're of course going to need to first share this database with some other folks. But for the sake of this example here, I will just assign myself new inquiries. So I'll not worry about adding anyone else at this time. Now, one other thing you might want to track is going to be when this inquiry came in. And this is actually metadata that we can grab. It's the created date field. If we come in here and use the created time field type, we can turn time off if we don't care about the minute that the inquiry came in. But what we do care about is most definitely going to be the date that it came in. So let's go ahead and create that field. And you can see that in fact, I'm recording this video on September 11th, 2022. And that's demonstrated here by the created date of these fields. Before we move on, we want to fix one more part that I said we'd come back to and it's this primary field. Now, if you've watched videos from this channel in the past, you probably know that I love using concatenate formulas in the primary field. What I want to do here is automatically name this record based on other information that I received in these other field types. For example, I might choose to name a record by who submitted the inquiry. I'll use the full name. And then also what was the date that that inquiry came into existence? That's just an example. However, you want to name this record is entirely up to you, but that's what I'll use here. So for this name field, I'll come down and use a formula type and I'll write a quick concatenate formula. If you've used Excel a lot, you're probably fairly comfortable with this formula. It simply means that we're stringing together multiple other pieces of data inside of our, in this case, database. So I'm going to use the full name, bring that in here. And now I'm going to separate this with a space, a dash and a space. And those characters, the space dash space have to happen inside of quotations, which I've done right here. And I have to separate that from the full name variable with this comma, which I've done here. Now again, I'm going to bring in another variable. So I have to separate it again with another comma. And lastly, I'm going to bring in that created date. But you'll notice if I just bring in created date right here by itself, it's going to wind up looking funky. As soon as I save this, the created date format doesn't really look very clean. In fact, it's pretty much a mess. So let's go ahead and give this a prettier format so that we can make more sense of it. So rather than dropping in created date just by itself, first, I'm going to start with a date time format. Use this formula here and inside of the date time format, I will add my created date field comma and then just a lowercase l inside of single quotes again. This is a standard format that's going to pop out as month, day, year. And then I will just go here and add one more parenthesis. So one of these parentheses is closing out the date time format. And then the second parenthesis is closing out the concatenate formula. I know this is a bit complicated if you're new to formulas, but go ahead and copy what you have here. Practice formulas a little bit on your own and pretty soon you'll be rocking and rolling with these yourself. I'm going to go ahead and save this up. And now what we see is it's grabbing just the space dash space and then the date in a nice, easy to read format. What it doesn't have is a full name here because none of these have actually been filled out. But you can use your imagination that if I had filled this out, give Airtable just a second to recalibrate that formula. And we're going to see that that formula is reading just perfectly. So we now have a proper data structure. Let's go ahead and start over with brand new records. But before we move on, we need to talk about how we're going to accept new inquiries. How do they come into our business? Generally, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to have some kind of a form. People are going to fill something out on our website and it's going to pop into our database. The nice thing about Airtable forms is we don't have to build any kind of integration whatsoever. As soon as someone submits that form, it's going to automatically show up here in our database. In order to access a form in Airtable, go to your views, scroll on down to the form view type and just pop this in here. You can rename it if you want. I'll just create a new view right here. And by default, it's going to take all of the different fields that we've already created and just put them in here. Now we don't want all of these fields in our form. I don't want the status in here, right? Remember the status we have new application assigned. Well, every time a new form is filled out, it's going to have the status of new application. So I don't want them to be able to change that. So we want to hide this in order to get rid of it. We can just click on here and say, remove this field from the form. It got dropped over here on the left hand side. If we ever need to bring it back, we can just drag and drop it back. I'm going to also remove the assigned to field. I don't want to have the person filling out the form determine who it's going to be assigned to. So remove this from the form as well. What I care about are those form questions. 
the name of the person, the email address, and the help that they're looking for and that they submit. Now in your own time, you can always come back in and play with the other options inside a form. Add some images to make them look a little more attractive, add a logo, you can change what happens after people click the button, you can rewrite what the button looks like. All these options are available. Go ahead and mess with those and customize the form to your liking. So now we're gonna assume that the form is available. I can either share the form link by itself by just copying and pasting this link right here, or I can go to embed this form on my site. But as soon as somebody submits the form, whether it's embedded in my site or they do it directly inside of the URL that I share with them, that data is going immediately into my Airtable database. Let's go ahead and take that out for a quick spin just to prove it works. I'm now previewing the form. I can fill this out, test case. I'll fill it out with my email address so that I actually can send email here if I need to. And I have this problem here and submit. I've now just submitted that information. If I flip back into our database, change my view back to the grid view, you're gonna see that new piece of information right here. Now, of course, it doesn't have a status yet and it's not assigned to anyone yet. So we have to fix those pieces. Now, every time a brand new form comes in, we wanna give it the status of new application. So let's build an automation for that exact scenario. I come up to my automations panel here, open up automations, and I'm gonna say when a form is submitted is the trigger I'm waiting for. Specifically, it's gonna ask me what table, and I only have my one table of inquiries in this simple example. I have my form, which I just created, and I can now choose a record from that form. This will be my example that I take through my next steps in my automation. So I'll select this here, and all I wanna do is update that particular record. So I say update record in the action. I have to select the table that this record lives in. Again, this is inquiries. I need to say the record ID, and this information is coming from the trigger in the past step. So grab the record ID from when the form is submitted. Plug that in right here, and the only thing I wanna update is that status field. I want that status to automatically come in and be updated to new application as soon as a new form is filled out. We can go ahead and run this as configured to confirm that it works as planned. Once we've run it, we'll pop back into our data structure and we'll be able to see that yes, that new application status now exists here. If we open this up, I use the space bar to do that and we look at the record history, we can see that in fact, automations just updated this record with that new status thanks to the automation we just built. Before moving on from this automation, be sure to go back to it, name it whatever you like. So in this case, I'll say update status and make sure to turn the automation on, otherwise it's not gonna work in the background. But now for the cool automation that we're gonna build, we wanna send out an email on behalf of the person who it was assigned to. So in this case, let's say I wanted to uh, assign it to myself. I can now assign it and that's going to then be the trigger that sends an email from whoever it was assigned to to the person who filled it out. Now in this case, we're looking at the same email address both times because I used myself as a test guinea pig in both cases. So bear with me on that, but you're gonna get the basic idea from how we break this down. So let's go ahead and add a new automation here. Come down to the bottom left and say create automation and might as well name this automation while we're here. This is gonna be new assignee, send email, and we're gonna build our trigger. In this case, we're gonna use a record matches conditions. So I'm gonna set those conditions up. Again, we're watching the inquiries table, and the two conditions I really want here are going to be, number one, that the assigned to field is not empty. So we wanna make sure that it's been assigned to somebody, and we also wanna test that the status of this is specifically new application because we don't wanna ever send out, uh, hey, we just received your application and assigned you to this particular person on our team if it's not a new application. We only wanna do that for brand new inquiries, so let's make sure we include that other status as well. Now we can go ahead and pick a record, and since we have a record that meets those conditions in our base, we'll make that selection here. Now let's take a quick pause and think about what we want this automation to do. Number one, we're gonna want it to send out an email on behalf of the person it was assigned to. But number two, we want it to also update the status of this particular inquiry so that we know that it's now in progress. It's no longer a new application, and this is gonna prevent us from sending the same email multiple times to people. It might seem a little out of order, but actually I wanna update the status of this record first 
And you'll see why in a minute. It has to do with the fact that I'm gonna get into conditional groups. But for now, let's just work on updating that status from a new application to in progress. So I'm gonna add an action here. I'm going to update a record. Again, I'm updating the inquiry record. And I'll select the table, inquiries. Again, just as we did before, I select the record ID that initiated the automation. So this is the record ID that came from the trigger. Plug that in here. And all I wanna update here is that status field. And I wanna update it to, well, assigned. I continued to say in progress earlier, I forgot how I had labeled these. So whatever the next stage is for you in your process, that's what you wanna assign it to here. In this case, we just assigned it to somebody, so let's give it that new status. We can go ahead and run this as configured, and when we run this test, if we flip back into our data structure now, we're going to see that the status of this particular inquiry has now updated, but we're not done yet. Let's go back into our automations, and now we want to set up some conditional groups. And the reason that we're gonna do conditional groups here is because we wanna send out emails that are different based on who got this assigned to them. So I'm imagining that we have a team of, let's say five, six, seven, ten 10 people, who cares? It can be however many you want. We only wanna send an email from the person who it was assigned to. And we have to build each one of these actions independently. So first we have to create the conditional group. We wanna set up some rules that say, we're gonna send this email from person one if it was assigned to person one. If it's assigned to person two, it's in a different group and we're gonna send a different email from a different person. So first build that group. So we're gonna set up the group rules here and we're going to say that this record from step one, drill into step one here, we're gonna like scroll on down and find out who it was assigned to. In this case, this is gonna be the group for me. So I'll assign it to me for this particular grouping. And now you see that under this conditional bucket, it's saying if this particular record was assigned to this person, then I'm gonna do whatever actions we add in here. And I can now create a number of different conditional actions and conditional groups that say, well, if it wasn't assigned to Gareth, but it was assigned to Steve, then I want you to send an email from Steve's account. If it wasn't assigned to Steve or Gareth, but it was instead assigned to Pamela, then I want you to send email from Pamela's account, etc. So use conditional grouping here to your advantage. Now I want this email to come directly from my email. I could send email from Airtable's email, and that's okay, but in this case, I want this email, this is gonna be customer facing. I want it to come directly from my Gmail account or my Microsoft Outlook. So if you're an Outlook user, you've got Outlook email right here. If you're a Gmail user, you can plug into Gmail right here. I'm gonna select the action, send email. Now remember, this particular action only lives inside of this conditional group. So this email is only ever gonna go out if I'm the person assigned to it. And the reason for that is I'm gonna pick my particular Gmail account right here. And if I had other people on my team, again, who wanted to be a part of this automation, they would need to go in here and add their own Gmail account to their particular group. But now I can say, well, who am I sending this to? And this is where we're gonna need to get extra careful about what emails we're using. We wanna use the email that the person filled out when they filled out the form. That is the email field that we built in Airtable, so plug that in here. Now for the subject, let's say something like new inquiry received, and we can type our example message here. We can use a mixture of static and dynamic data. So if we wanted to address the person who had filled this out, we can say hi, and then we can bring in their name just by selecting here, the full name. In this case, I used the name of test case, which is a funky name to choose, but we'll plug it in here, and then here's the message. Bring in some attachments if you have anything to share, and let's just generate a preview and see what this looks like. So once this pops up, we're gonna see that it would have gone to this email address, this is the subject, and we would have plugged in all that information here. Now as a quick reminder, one thing that's kind of funky about this is we would generally wanna send that email first and then update the record status. But since we know we're gonna update the record status regardless, it's really easy to just plug it in here. The actions here that are not conditional have to happen prior to breaking out into any conditional actions. That's just a fact of how Airtable automations are structured. So yes, it might be a little bit out of sequence because ideally I would wanna update the record after sending the email, but hopefully you can see past that and you're okay with this process being a little out of order. 
Again, once you're ready here, be sure to turn that automation on and now you have a fully baked process. New people can come to your website, enter information on your embedded form or use the link that you share with them. As soon as then people on your team see that it comes in, it will be given the status of new application and then you can assign someone to that particular inquiry and an automated email is gonna be sent out to the person who submitted in the first place and the email is gonna be coming from the person who it was assigned to. Pretty slick solution. If you have any questions, please drop them below. I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts and be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on future no-code videos and automation. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.